Let's now take a look at the second example. In this example, we're going to be solving a homogeneous system of equations that corresponds with the given matrix. So what does that mean? What does solving the homogeneous system that corresponds mean? Well, what we're looking at here is, is a matrix, but this is the coefficient matrix of some system of equations. And homogeneous means all those equations have been set equal to zero. So for example, in this first row, this means the equation that it came from was something like x1 plus 0x2 minus 3x3 minus 3x4, there's a lot of variables, plus 2x5 equals zero. All of these equations need to be set equal to zero. So the thing that you do is uh, you can remember that they're all set equal to zero, or if you find it helpful, you can use an augmented matrix uh, so that you don't forget. So let's start solving this system of equations. Well, the first row operation that you would do, and I'm using an augment augmented matrix here. It's not totally necessary, but I just want to make, make the point that these are set equal to zero. The first row operation that you would do sensibly is to take uh, two times row one plus row two into row two. Using our down and to the right strategy, the first entry that we would want to clear out would be this minus two right here, and that would be the sensible linear combination with which to do it. The next linear combination that you would use um, for a row operation is going to be similar, minus two row one plus row three into row three. And then this would quickly be followed with with two row two plus row three into row three. So something to notice here is that as you go along, you're never changing the right-hand side of the dotted line. For a homogeneous system of equations, these row operations are not gonna change zero into anything else. So you can leave that off and if you don't want to write that down. Uh, another thing to notice is that this is working okay and that our stair step is starting to form. But we have an entire row of zeros at the bottom. So that's okay, let's just highlight it to point it out. And this is the point at which you would start moving upward and to the left with your row operations to put the matrix in reduced row echelon form. Those zeros are going to remain zeros. So the next couple of row operations in succession are going to look like this. We're going to take uh, a, a row replacement for, for row one and then we're going to take a multiple of row two. So let's, um, let's make some notes about what's happening. I know this has gone through very quickly, but you can check all of these row operations on your own. The interesting part of this example is going to be when we parameterize the solutions to the system of equations. So let's see what we've produced here. We have a, an entire row of zeros at the bottom. That's going to affect things greatly. And let's also notice some other stuff. There is a column that looks like it's all zero and there is a column, which is a duplicate of another column. So when I look at this, when I look at this system of equations and this matrix, what I see here is that I have three uh, free, what I'm going to call free columns. And I have three free variables that correspond with those columns. So, for example, I can notice here that column five, as I've written it right now, is equal to the linear combination, a particular linear combination of previous columns. It's minus three column one minus five thirds column three, because the actual uh, the actual vector itself that forms this column of the matrix is minus three minus five over three zero. And this is the scalar minus three times the vector one zero zero minus the scalar five thirds times the vector zero one zero. And this is what I see as column one. And this is what I see as column three in my matrix. And this is column five. So this is a linear combination that relates these columns. I also have that the second column is zero times the first column or any of them, and that the fourth column is equal to one times the third column. 
So I get, I get these special kind of duplicate columns showing up in my matrix. In fact, why don't I go down and jot that down just for the sake of example here. Column 2 is equal to 0 times column 1. And additionally, I have that column 4 is equal to 1 times column 3. So I have to do a little bit more work to parameterize the solutions to the system of equations. Let me go back now and, and write it in terms of variables x's. Okay, and size, size down this remark that I've made here about these linear combinations. Okay, so this is what we've observed about these columns. So if I take the effort of rewriting this as a system of equations, I'm going to take where I ended here after many row operations. And I know I went through it very quickly, but what I did was a sequence of row operations that cleared everything kind of underneath the stair. First, we cleared down, and we cleared down, and we cleared down until we got to something that was upper triangular, and then we cleared up with this entry, and we cleared up with this entry, and then we produced something that was also upper triangular as, as best as we could, almost upper triangular. And if I rewrite this as a system of equations, this is going to look like x1 plus a bunch of zeros, and then minus 3x5 equals zero. From the second row, I'm going to get x3 plus x4 minus 5 thirds x5 equals 0. And then the last equation is just 0 equals 0. So if I think about this as being a system of equations like this, which has the same solutions as the system that I started with, well, from here I see that x2 and x4 and x5, they can be set to be anything. So x2 isn't even specified in here. x2 can be anything. It was kind of removed in the process. So in fact, I can set x2, x4, and x5 to be anything. They are free. But x1 is dependent on x5. And x3 is dependent on x4 and x5. So x1 and x3 depend on the values of x5 and on x4 and x5, respectively. In order to completely parameterize all of the solutions to the system of equations, of which there are infinitely many, we need to name our free variables. So let's call them, say, uh, s, t, and v, or t, s, and v. So let us name x2 and x4 and x5 by t, s, and v, where t, s, and v stand for any real number there in R. That means that when I write down the complete set of solutions, uh, a general solution is something of the form 3V T minus S plus 5 thirds V S and V. Let's unpack that a little bit, but this is the solution. And by the solution, I mean the family of infinitely many solutions, whereby I could take V, T, and S to be anything. So one solution, well, let me just pick my three favorite numbers today. Maybe my favorite numbers are setting V equal to 1, T equal to 0, and S equal to 5. Uh, or something that looks a little bit less like an s, s equal to 10. That would give me the single solution of 3, 0, minus 10, uh, plus 5 thirds, uh, 10, and 1. This is just one particular solution of the infinitely many that exist, so for an example. 
So why is it that I have this exact expression? We need to go back to the linear combinations amongst the columns, or alternatively, just look at this reduced system of equations and read it off out of there. So let's explain a little bit why we get this. Let's take a look at um, the, the last entry and the first entry. So I name x5 to be v, or I set x5 to be some value v. Let's say this. Well, the first row tells me that x1 minus 3x5 is equal to 0. So x1 is equal to 3x5. So if I have set x5 to be equal to v, that means x1 is equal to 3v. So when I go over here and look at my general solution, the fifth entry, which corresponds to x5, is v, and the first entry, which corresponds to x1, is 3v. I can do something similar to understand, to understand the other entries. I'm going to name x2 uh, to be, uh, let's see what I wanted to call it, t. So that's going to show up in the second entry here as t. x2 doesn't factor into anything else. And then I've also named x4 to be equal to s, and so you see that showing up uh, here in the fourth entry is s. And then the, the third entry here comes from the third row. So the third row, front out of space here, so I'll just kind of write it at an angle. We, we know that the relationship between x3, x4, and x5 is underlined here. So x3 plus x4 minus 5 thirds x5 is equal to 0. So x3 itself is given by minus x4 plus 5 thirds x5. And having, having named x, x4 and x5, I get to see this exact expression showing up here. I'm going to have a minus s plus 5 thirds v. And that is why I see this expression in the third entry of the vector that describes the general solution to this system of equations.